Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm going to be continuing on what we were exploring in the last video, which was sort of going over how to control the highlights and then doing stuff with it. Like we did a directional blur with the highlights. However, I kind of just jumped into it. I wanted to see what else we could do with it. And I came up with a couple of neat things that you can sort of do when you grab specifically the highlights like so. So if you don't remember from the last tutorial, all you have to do to grab the highlights is grab your footage, duplicate it up one layer, go to Lumetri, and then just take the curves, the white curves right here, uh, the Luma curves, and bring it down to about halfway between this square. And what that does is it allows us to only select the really high parts and everything else becomes black. And then once it becomes black, we then go up to our opacity or our uh, video effects. And then right next to opacity, uh, down into the blending mode, we turn it to screen, which basically means that any of the black is going to be absorbed or overwritten by everything beneath it. And this allows us to only select the highlights. And then what we did was we added a directional blur. However, I wanted to add something different. So what I did instead was I actually added a sphere rise to the top layer. And what this does is, let me turn it on and off over here. You can see it sort of zooms everything in in this sort of like a zoomed manner from the for from the front right here all the way outward. And that actually adds a pretty neat effect here. Um, by giving us this sort of this this linear sort of zoom to everything. And when we actually toggle this on, it gives us this neat effect. And if you look closely, it's like you can see that everything is almost distorted in 3D space. So you can see that there's this can being duplicated on the right side here. But when we cross over it, it comes back. Now it's duplicated on the left side. And it's like it was pulled forward in 3D space. And it sort of adds this neat ghosting to everything in the shot. And it just, it looks natural, but it throws you off just a little bit. There's sometimes like four of the same object being duplicated. And like I said, they're like all in the same 3D space. So when we're on the left side of it, you can see uh, these cans up here. You can see that they're almost like their um, their Z positioning is actually preserved as we move past it. And it it creates this fun little effect that I think is sort of a, could be added maybe with the blur to sort of make everything feel all off and distorted. And then along with that, we can do a couple of different effects. So instead of sphere eyes, we could um, go into really any of these and have a lot of fun with it. Like maybe if we went with twirl, drop that on here and let's just see what that does when we bring this up. It's gonna like twirl it around the center, I believe. Yeah. So you know, we can sort of have this background going like this, and then let's bring that in. And there isn't much going on here right at first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna animate it. Let's go and bring only the top here. Let's go forward a little bit. Let's animate it backwards to the other side. And then let's kind of come back and untwirl it as we go. And I think this will add sort of like a fun little, uh, I don't know, just a neat little effect here. And let's just take a little, let's create an out point right here. Uh, mark out. And this is just so I can create a pre-render and we can kind of see what it's doing over time. So I'm just going to do this. And once it's done, we'll take a look at what it does. Okay, so it's done. And you can see that it's doing this sort of swirly uh, motion to it. So now let's bring in our bottom footage here and let's take a look at what this looks like. And you can see it's a little bit wonky, so maybe we want to use a little bit less of it. But you can see that the elements in here are still the same and that sort of gives it a, uh, it feels like the scene a lot. And you know, we could fine tune this maybe only like a couple of degrees in each direction to sort of give like an offsetting feeling to you. But again, we're just sort of testing things out and sort of having fun with this uh, effect right here. But that is really just sort of what I, wanted, what I wanted to show in this tutorial is that we don't just have to blur the highlights. And in any of these tutorials, we can sort of combine different aspects that we learn and create new things. So we could select the highlights through the old method and we can apply any of the effects in here or maybe make you know scale and position changes. And we can actually have a lot of fun with just being able to select the highlights, being able to control just fine tune some part of the part of this footage and then make it our own give it a certain mood or feeling thanks everyone for joining me if you have any questions or comments go ahead and them in the comment section below on our website adobemasters.net if you want to see more videos similar to this one go ahead and hit that subscribe button and until next time everyone see ya